tonight on Hip on the Spot News. We become master of weather and find out the skies are not so bright. Dynamic lightning takes us by surprise in the Persian Gulf. Natasha reports that Dubai is way brighter now from her shopping trip. And we find some fixes for our VR FPS troubles. This and more on how I play. Hello Virtual Pilots, I'm Andre Celesti and tonight we are going to take a look at the latest developments in DCS world. And it has been a blast the last few days with the update 2.8 preparing to be released and getting released after we experienced a few delays but nothing too serious. Apart from our waiting games on the Discord channel, shout out to my hip crew that experienced two days of waiting for the patch with pot party and a lot of screaming. Must have been the excitement from the long awaited 2.8 update. So on the 28th of October the update dropped and we climbed the hype train once again. But between the already covered features like dynamic weather and new weather effects we got other additions were to be mentioned in our on the spot news. So yes, we got rainbows in DCS world, now everything will be alright, right? Sadly wrong, don't worry we will tell you why later. So the new dynamic lightning was a great addition to DCS. It does offer some great new visible effects like shown in the video with a tomcat passing under airport lightning. We can see how the brightness changes on the model being influenced by the light source. This is available currently only on the Persian Gulf map as a testbed. We can now notice the glory effect on the clouds, a multitude of ice halo effects that we can choose from in the mission editor. The volumetric clouds now move according to the wind direction and speed and each cloud layer respects wind settings at the set altitude band. So if you are like me and set high winds you will definitely see the clouds moving accordingly. But good luck flying out there. So as I mentioned before we received a new terrain light system for the Persian Gulf map with accurate real time shading. This comes with some improved road night illumination, improved illumination for the Burj Khalifa and optimized surface mesh. It looks awesome at night and hopefully it will be implemented very soon for the other maps as well. So for the moment treat this as a test case. What is not a test case is our new sponsor. VR Rock is offering something we deem right for our community. Blue light protection and specialized prescription lenses for your VR headsets. Yes, you heard me right. It's a problem I encountered ever since I started using my VR headset. My friends who wear prescription glasses couldn't enjoy flying in DCS as my headset couldn't safely fit without taking the glasses off. VR Rock will manufacture the lenses according to the prescription information you provide, fitting most VR headsets currently on the market and will ship it worldwide with the benefit of a tax-free policy. They also include non-prescription eye protection lenses. If you use our Hip Games Halloween discount code you will receive a 15% off for all orders and support our channel in the process. Link is in the video description. Moving on, the AI received some new and improved basic fighter maneuvers for jets at this time, so nothing yet for the World War II aircrafts. Our fellow YouTuber Groundin Signwinder showcased these changes, no doubt the AI has been improved but do not expect a human-like experience. Still, nothing can beat a human adversary. Alongside many fixes and improvements, we noticed some graphical additions like an adjusted rain effect, a new tone mapping process and exposure control, they recommend we reset our gamma setting to 2.2 and we also got a new improved motion blur effect for those of you who like to use this setting, it is better now and doesn't make you sick, according to Rupesh. We did got a F2 camera smoothing when rotating with the numpad keys. The problem is that I cannot bind the rotation to an axis in order to pan the camera in a very smooth way for the videos. I am still required to rotate the view by holding numpad 4 and 6 in sequence just to rotate slower and smooth. But now we are required to hold down the shift key as well. So uh, yeah, an axis will help, just saying. But we have hopes for a future improvement. Now interesting enough, the VR performance boost is not present in the patch notes. It is alright if they didn't manage to include it, but the problem is that the performance in VR has been drastically reduced. 
Some users are reporting issues with their VR performance. Now this can be caused by many things. It seems that that missing optimization that was mentioned prior to the patch is really required. The only thing we can say is that by using OpenXR, a free alternative to either SteamVR or other programs, the issue of performance is kind of resolved. For SteamVR users, that would be a good alternative and it is recommended for most of the VR users out there. I think we will make a video tutorial on it very soon. Personally, I am having a good FPS with OpenXR, but when I switch to SteamVR, well, let's put it that way, it's bucket time again. Another mention is the VR Performance Toolkit. I'll link them both in the video description. Now, please remember, we are using the open beta branch of DCS and 2.8 is basically in testing and open for us for… yeah, testing. So ED expects our feedback and we will await further patches as we know it is an ongoing process for improvements until stable. Speaking of which, I know some users that have switched back to stable in order to continue to fly in VR. That's another solution for the time being. Moving on, we received a new integrity check setting that require pure scripts. This is in order to prevent exploits and make it that certain mods will be blocked. The ones that modify the core files in DCS world. It's a good thing to be aware, especially if you are a multiplayer host or mission creator. For voice chat, they added the possibility to use turn servers. And we received a tool that helps our AWACS and GTAC operators out there to view heading with True North and the respected magnetic declination for different regions of the world. A very interesting find was the new trigger conditions in the mission editor for group members fuel higher or less than. This will be very useful for tankers and other operators for sending replacements. Also, we got many improvements for the F10 map with additional information when checking our headings. In the settings tab, we received a new external field of view slider for the graphical options and new formats available for screenshots and the mission editor lists the names of the missions in the title. There are more features and additions like the embedded recorder for the mission tracks. I didn't manage to get it to work until so far, but we will keep on testing. Now for our modules, the Hornet received a few fixes including some gun accuracy improvements and they added a launch delay for the AMRAM missiles. Don't let it catch you by surprise. For the Viper, they added the NCTR indications, the ECS inlet scoops logic, we got the Mark 84 air high drag bomb and training version and a surprise performance improvement with different levels of LOD. A few lessons have been added and many fixes and well needed improvements took place in this patch for the Viper. Both the Viper and the Hornet have plenty of ongoing tasks which we will cover in a separate video very soon. We must also mention that the F-16C Viper didn't receive the Low Altitude Drogue Delivery or LADD bombing mode. It was showcased by Matt Wagner, senior producer at Eagle Dynamics and they mentioned that it is requiring more tuning before release. Moving on, I am happy to report that there is no more jitter on the supercarrier during turns. Aye aye, Captain. From Hitblur, we just received a major F-14 patch. Amongst other additions, we got a new high quality pilot and Rio bodies that are now available in the cockpit view. A radar simulation expansion to encompass jamming and associated EW effects, new gesture functionality for mission editors with new custom commands which let gesture perform action on his own. This will be prepared of course by the mission designer without the player's input which can help drive a scripted narrative or create the illusion of him being an autonomous Rio. So yes, this is great for all of our campaign makers out there. Good luck scripting. Apart from that, Hitler has added the ability to make Jester change channel presets for the radio, tune tech and channels on his own, change steer points, create steer points from coordinates belonging to a trigger zone, set the VCS to on, off or standby, manipulate the TID range knob, perform an RWR test and even have him eject on the command of the mission creator. Well, I doubt we needed a special command for Jester to eject on his own. As we know, he is quite a scary cat in certain situations. But hey, more is good. Oh, and we got a minor cockpit optimization, always welcome for our modules. 
The Apache and the Hein received many fixes and improvements. The Apache got more performance boosting LODs and a cycled no weapon missile rockets gun and no weapon again. Really nice. Petrovich got more AI voiceovers that works with targets and countermeasures. We also got a grenade launcher tutorial mission. No more throwing grenades like Hungarian potatoes. We shoot them properly now. With this new update, our users can now purchase and fly the new Aermaki MB339 or 339 for those of you who like to pronounce things in a certain way by India Fox Echo, a military jet trainer and light attack aircraft design and manufactured by Italian aviation company Aermaki. The module comes with a variety of country liveries, several training and practice missions, single player missions and instant action missions. Also available at launch is a mini campaign. We didn't get the module yet, but on the patch notes there are a few issues with the launch. The wheel chocks are currently deactivated, the brakes control indicator is always on and it has some repair issues, plus missing a collision model for the flaps. Minor things that will be adjusted very soon. We are looking forward to see how this new module performs in DCS world. But please, let us know if you got the module and what are your thoughts about it. Moving on, we got news about the Black Shark 3 development. As ED continues to develop the previously announced project Black Shark 3 with the goal of improved graphics and new systems. Thousands of man hours have gone into this dramatic improvement of the KA 50 attack helicopter in order to expand its gameplay. Black Shark 3 leveraged new DCS core technology to match the quality of the current aircrafts. So let's get a more detailed view at this. About the 3D helicopter module. It seems it's going to be completely new and more accurately detailed based on newly available data, drawings and photographs. Now, that is a strong statement, but I do understand the implication of this. A novel modeling of internal compartments, engine, transmission and control elements is a first for a DCS module. All of this exquisite detail can be seen, pay attention, under the hatches. So you tell me that Tovarashi Vasily can fiddle with the pumps and hoses? It seems that way. That is true. Also, the new wingtip pylons have been added for the Igla missiles in order to provide two additional hardpoints to the four existing ones. So very similar to the missiles used in manpads, the air-to-air -air Igla are designed to intercept subsonic aircraft out to 5 kilometers. The Missile Warning System or MVS is integrated into the onboard defense with the ability to display detected threats on the Abris display. And thanks to four combined sensors that operate in the IR and UV ranges, when a launch is detected, a missile launch warning is displayed on the Abris and automatic dispensing of flares is possible. Now please note that for those of you who don't want to use the MVS and IGLA missiles, there will be options to remove them from the module. Now in the past we already talked about the new INS system that is integrated in the KA-50. Now based on a complex information processing algorithm using the Kalmar filter, just like in real life navigation systems. The calculator receives data from several navigation sensors. Based on these input data, the Kalmar filter vector is calculated, consisting of three axis coordinates, velocities, heading, drift angle and wind speed. Thanks to the filter, even if one of more navigation sensors fail or give out data with a large error, the navigation parameters will continue to be calculated indirectly through data from other sensors. This model of inertia navigation system is the most advanced in DCS. And yes, it is a big deal. Now the upgrade program will allow you to save later by buying now. That means all existing owners of Black Shark 2 will benefit from a reduced Black Shark 3 upgrade price. Yeah, so many Black Sharks. For those not wishing to upgrade, DCS Black Shark 2 will continue to function. There will be also some bundles available like the KA-52 with the MI-8 bundle or the KA-52 plus the combined arms. In other news, there is also a very funny Halloween sale that gives you great savings up to 50% across the most popular products. On the standalone shop, there is an exclusive sale until the 6th of November. Be advised that due to the Steam Halloween sale criteria, this promotion is not available on Steam. Well, 
It seems that the Halloween spirit got included in the sim files, as we are seeing reports from multiple users experiencing <coughs> creepy stuff in the sim. We restrain from spoiling your own experience, so just be aware. So all in all a really good update with many improvements and fixes, quality of life additions and of course a few issues that most likely will be addressed in a later patch. The good side is that in contrast with other games and simulators being developed out there, we are getting a patch every week, with some exceptions. But please, let us know what's your opinion on 2.8. Was it the patch you were waiting for? Did it reach your expectations? Let us know in the comments section down below. And that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. Remember to leave us a like if you find the video informative and subscribe to keep in touch with all the latest news on your favorite simulators and games. I am Andre Celesti, reminding you to fly safe and I'll see you next time.